You're on the middle bar, Kelly Schaefer. You might know him from Atheist. We will now know him from a band called Till the Dirt is his new project. Uh, he joins us to talk the new album, Outside the Spiral. Kelly, g'day, mate. Welcome to the show, and thanks very much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. How's everything in Australia? Oh, well, I'm in New Zealand, actually. I'm a little, I'm, I'm even Zealand. further south, man. I'm even further oh, down okay. under. Yeah, I'm the perennium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's the, like the crack of dawn there right now, right? Uh, really? what, what are we, 10.30 in the morning? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's quite a difference. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, anytime, man, anytime. Um, I, the first thing I thought, because I put out a, when you first released the first single, I put out um, some social media stuff, with shared the video, and I hadn't done all the research I probably should have done. And I, so I put former atheist front man. And I got corrected uh -huh. by a lot of people saying, hang on, no, he's not former <laughs> anything. He's still there. So that got me thinking, why did you feel the need to do this under a different banner than atheist? Well, I mean, it's, uh, they're two totally different children. That's for sure. I mean, um, I, I, I never intended to, it was during the COVID lockdown in 2020. Um, I set up a little studio. A friend of mine gave me a little DAW to record, I just figured, you know, it'd be, it'd be great to be able to record some ideas, um, you know, aside from working with a band. So that's how it started. And so then I just got, I just was overwhelmed with how cool it was and the, and the, the quality of the recordings that I could make. Because the last time I ever did any home recording was back in the 80s or 90s with four tracks and it was just garbage, you know what I mean? So it was never in inspirational to write on that level. But these days, you know, I've got 24 tracks. I've got all the guitar sounds I need. I got all everything. I, I have a left, I play left-handed. So I have a left-handed bass. I have everything. And I, and I, um, you know, used a lot of loops, cut them all up and, and started making these songs. And these songs were like different. Um, they allowed me to, you know, obviously I did vocals on them and, and I found spaces for my singing voice in there, which I would never, ever use with atheists for starters. And, all of atheist music is tuned to 440e and this was all tuned down to b so it's two different vibes all together and um so i would never you know i would never uh mix the church and state pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> nice nice so actually i was gonna ask this a bit later but i'll, I'll br bring it in now because i i did notice that man i mean um one of my favorite tracks is as it seems and like the opening cool. of that i'm like Sounds like fucking Scott Wheeland. What's going on here? I mean, how how challenging was that for you as a vocalist? What you did on this record? It's it's not at all. It's something I've always been doing. Anybody that's um, familiar with Neurotica um, was my band in the late '90s, early 2000s, and I got a chance to work with Kevin Shirley and uh, Brian Johnson from ACDC. And so I've always been a singer. I just never I never stuck my toe in that in that in that tub of death metal. You know what I mean? I never never mixed those two things just because I always felt. That, you know, organically, Atheist was always its own thing. And, you know, I didn't want to be that guy to, to try to, I, just, I knew I would always have other outlets to, to be able to sing. So singing to me is just something I've been doing since, you know, since the uh, late 80s. So I I, uh, I just never had a place for it and, and for what people typically know me from, you know. So uh, so it was an easy transition for me. It made perfect sense to to uh, to do it. And, and it's not like a typical clean, clean voice, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's pretty raspy. I've been smoking for 35 years, so <laughs> it's got a gnarl to it, you know, but, yeah. but certainly it's, a, um, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, something that I, I, uh, really enjoy doing. And, and I think the contrast between that and having that kind of style of vocal, especially with harmonies, um, along with, uh, blast beats and things that I've just, I just really went into a different, different headspace than I ever would if I was sitting in a room writing with atheist and, uh, everything about it was different. And, uh, but really what brought on the, the, uh, the inspiration was just the isolation of it all, you know, just being stuck at home and not knowing how, you know, nobody really knew what life was going to be like. And if you're an artist, you know, your, your music sort of uh, is dictated by your surroundings. And if your surroundings are, you know, unknown, uh, you know, plague of the, of the world, you know, and, and the whole world shutting down, then you automatically, um, you know, that transfers to your art. And another sort of experiment that I went through by staying at home, and I think a lot of people went through this, was drinking at home, having cocktails at home, <laughs> and uh, you know, and and not knowing that you don't have to drive, so you can have like three or four cocktails of you know, or Jaeger bombs or shots or whatever. And uh, and so I was writing music in that headspace too, which I had never ever done with atheist. So all that created this tension and anger, uh, and and I think it's a much angrier record than I've ever made with atheist. Um, you know, and there's some beauty to it as well. You know, I mean, there's some some hopefulness, you know, as it seems as they, you know, the, I love the contrast between, you know, the beginning of that song. And then when it comes in, it just grabs you by the throat, and doesn't let go until it hits that chorus again, you know. So, uh, 
you know, there are no rules in music, man. You can do whatever the hell you want, you know, but within, within a band's, you know, especially a band that's been around for 30 years, I have the respect enough for the people that have followed that band for three, for three decades and, and uh, expect a certain level of um, different, uh, different kind of metal. So until the dirt, I, I just feel like I have a brand new outlet to, to do whatever I want. It's nice. It's a good place to be. When you first started dabbling with the DAW and doing stuff, did you have in mind that this was going to be a different project or were you just working on stuff that might end up being an atheist song? I was, I was in hour three of writing atheist riffs. So I was tuned to E, you know, on my guitar the whole time. And, and just, I literally logged three hours worth of material, you know, just riffs, like little one minute sections of stuff that I thought was cool. And, um, and one night I just came in and, and uh, tuned my guitar down, you know, and I was like, ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out here for a little while and write some songs. And, and so when I did, I, I, you know, uh, I really love I love the single note Sabbathy shit, you know, the Caius uh stone rock. You know, that's always been my vibe anyway with Neurotica. That was it was a lot like that. It was kind of um, you know, and those those kind of grooves go really well against if you just go from that, I was finding anyway, that going from that into just insane speed and vicious vocals. I, I don't think I've ever done vocals like this ever in my career. Like, but again, it's like I, I've explained in other interviews that I, you know, when you go out to the pub or wherever and you go out and you have drinks and you're about, you know, 10 beers in or a couple shots and, you know, that, that guy that's like a foot taller than you, you don't really see him as a foot taller than you. You know what I mean? You feel braver. You feel more courageous. Uh, you, uh, and, and also with communication with people, you know, you tend to talk a lot more. You, you share a lot more, you know, people when they're drunk are, are different. And so if you, again, if you apply that to, to an artist, it automatically changes the music. And, and, uh, so I, I try to explain that in, 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 in the least scumbag of ways, because I mean, it's, it's really not something to be proud of. You're like, yeah, you know, I just got shit faced and wrote a bunch of fucking metal but i didn't get shit faced i just got to the point where i felt like vocally i'm gonna scr i'm gonna scream this if i was in an atheist headspace i would probably be i would second guess myself a little more because i was be smoking pot and pot is a different it opens different doors in your brain and um and you know i make no bones over the years about using those things to open those doors in my brain and i think all artists do in some capacity all good ones do anyway <laughs> you know <laughs> zeppelin and the stones all you know that shit was all made under the influence you know and and um i think that's why you find bands records as they get older and they get into their fourth album where everybody's sober and everybody wonders well how come it doesn't sound the same <laughs> it's like well you know there's you know so uh it's just it's a bit of a sacrifice you know to your body i suppose but you know, art's art, man. For, for me, that's the way I like to do it. I like to experiment like that. None of none of those things are a problem in my life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's nice to be able to just dip in and dip out of that headspace. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, well, well, you did. And, and like, you know, because I was going to ask you what you did differently. Were you listening to something? Had you read something? Had you, you know, what it was? But you've answered that question. Yeah, definitely not. Lit and during that period of time, I definitely don't listen to music uh, unless it's way outside the the bounds um i did listen to a little borknagar just because it was on the covid lockdown jams and so i really was I, I got turned on to that band during that period and and uh so maybe you know maybe a little of the beauty of borknagar came through in in some of my choruses you know what i mean or that is or maybe there's you know i don't know if it had anything to do with it or not but i just that whole period of covid was really the most prolific period i've ever had in my career as an artist like the writing i mean i wrote so i wrote I have a whole nother Till the Dirt record right behind this one, plus a, plus an EP, <laughs> you know, because I really wanted to get, you know, while I was in that headspace, I wanted to write as much as I could while it was flowing, you know what I mean? I wanted to bottle it all up and, and have it. And so I'm really gr grateful to uh, a guy named Chris Hare from New, uh, New Orleans who, who gifted me that DAW. And I tell him all the time, like, this record doesn't happen unless you give me that, you know, because I'm not a tech head at all. I'm not like a guy that, you know, has a, I've never had a studio and, and if, you know, I mean, I did this all, you know, tracked most of the record myself and then later got, you know, uh, Scott Burns and other people involved after it became a thing, you know. But again, in the beginning, I still didn't even know it was going to be a band. I, I just like I just knew the songs were different. And so I just laid it on a bunch of friends that I knew I could trust to tell me where it landed for them. And uh, and here we are. <laughs> here we are indeed i mean you know you mentioned new orleans i was gonna say because there are some songs on there like forest of because at times i could hear some like heavier corrosion and conformity sort of vibes coming through and you know a little bit of a downy stuff yeah that louisiana swamp dust might have got into that daw you were using now, keep in mind how old i am i think the, you know guys like me and pepper keenan are, are coming from the same place you know 
we're, uh, you know, while it seems like an influence, like I definitely love COC and, and I, you know, I guess you could say it's an influence. I, it's more of a, it's more of a um, camaraderie, you know what I mean? Like I've all, I, cause I've been around long enough to see, you know, COC the, the way they used to sound as a punk band, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah. that, that was, just, that was my first introduction to, to corrosion and conformity. And, uh, and then it became, you know, and I just feel like, you know, I kind of rolled in that same headspace coming out of death metal. I started neurotica, which was very, very much, uh, COC ish, but a little, you know, the first neurotica album was very, uh, stone, you know, very stoner ish and, and trippy and, uh, but thick and heavy and, and, and catchy. Um, uh, you know, and then Brian Johnson from ACDC came in to produce that album and he left us alone. He let, he let that record be what it was. And, uh, when we moved on to do other records with Kevin Shirley and guys like that. They definitely brought us more into a radio friendly atmosphere, but yeah, I, I love all that. Um, you know, all that stuff comes from Black Sabbath. You know, I mean, anybody that plays uh, any kind of groove type metal owes it all to Tony Iommi. You know what I mean? Um, that man just, you know, he he laid some serious concrete groundwork that'll just never go away in my world anyway. So there's never there's never uh, never a time where I, where I um, I don't feel like that that guy is just you know so important to, to me as an artist anyway. Just so uh I, if, if anything we're all biting from him <laughs> yeah yeah 100 man we, we've all got a, a sheet metal accident uh, uh, to thank for, for for that right with the uh what happened to his fingers and the way he had to change plan and everything and it invented a whole new yeah, sound it's yeah it's yeah. really cool so i i um you know i i think that uh you know that's one of the coolest things about this record is that it's you know forced to because is a great example of, um just a nice you know listenable Thick, you know, so it's really hard to classify this, right? I mean, how do you classify it? I mean, I don't really know what to yeah. call it. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, uh, you know, I I've read a few things, and you know, I heard obviously "Till the Dirt," uh, the the the, uh, the first track. Uh, sorry, uh, outside the spiral, the first track, and I was like, I was like, I don't, where do you put this? Like it, and I think if it's undefinable, that's a good thing, right? Because you can't be yeah. you can't be put in a in in your in your lane. You you're in every lane. It's a little frustrating because it's the same thing happened with atheist in the beginning. People were like, what is this? You know? And, and I was like, I don't fucking know. I you know, I went to, uh, you know, and people, you know, called it brain metal or, or called it, you know, like, you know, long before technical metal was actually this solid classification, you know, because there weren't any bands like that. And so uh, back then, you know, and um, so, yeah, here I am again with this uh, trying to explain it because man, everybody needs it. Everybody needs a description, you know, social media, uh, doing interviews, you know, I, I see it, I see people describe it and it, it kind of bums me out a little bit because it really is, <laughs> it doesn't need, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, every now and then, you know, you have a movement and then, you know, it builds up this boulder. As I say, I have this old saying that I don't want to lean on the boulder. I want to move it. You know what yeah. I mean? I want to move it to a new, new place. And I, and I feel like in a lot of moments on this record for better or for worse, I moved the boulder and, uh, and, um, and I think that, you know, you have to, it's, it's something's got to give, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and uh, you know, while people might wrinkle their nose at some of the, when they read the influences, you know, if somebody goes, mm, Alice in Chains and black metal, uh, I, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't like that shit, you know, well, maybe you will, because, you know, you, you may not like cayenne pepper, but you might like it in a fucking stew, you know <laughs> exactly. what I mean? In a stew of other things, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not the spice in general. It's how the spice is used, you know? Don't so, snort uh, it, eat it. Yeah, fucking it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, like if you if you had to push me, I just had a little bit of time to think. So there's definitely a progressive element to this. There's definitely a death metal element to this, but there's also a groove element. So I mean, progressive group death groove, something like that, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's got a catchy catchiness to it as well. I mean, there's a lot of hooks, and um, and I just think that's something that really um can can lend itself to the extreme metal world. You know, I just. Just a little more, you know, hooks without losing the anger, without mm. losing the viciousness. You know what I mean? Uh, angry hooks. And angry. Then, you know, all the hooks don't have to be these la di da fucking, you know, uh, sing alongs. You know what I mean? A hook can be, uh, you know, in a lot of different ways. And I think that um, there's some nasty ones on this record. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I got to tell you, you know, I mean, uh, live, I'm so excited because I, I've never been a part of a record that's never been performed live, you know? So I brought in some really, really great guys to be in the actual band. Ian Way, who plays uh, with Surreption, guitar player, um, also has his own band. He's a really phenomenal guitar player. Um, and then uh, three of the guys that are playing with me now in Atheist are going to be in the live Till the Dirt band as well. Dylan Marks, Jerry Watonski, and Yoav Ruiz-Feingold. So just a really badass 
group of guys that are going to be playing the shit out of this material. It's going to be fun because again, like, you know, this was, this was, stu- you know, sort of home, homegrown, you know, DIY in a way. And, uh, and then I was just lucky enough at the, at the, at the end of to, to pull in guys like Scott Burns and, and, uh, and then the guys that, you know, that guested on the record to Giorgio and Loomis and Longstreet. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, all this is just really co- like found, mu- found, music in a way you know what i mean like it never was intended i love shit like that i love when things aren't supposed to like when you don't plan on it you know uh it's the best usually the best guitar riffs you ever write happen in the first minute and a half that you sit down and play and so the same kind of happens with writing like i just the less you think about shit you know how people are going to think or anything the, the, the more naturally it comes for me anyway and i think that comes down to you know you mentioned that uh, about you know having a few cocktails and not having to worry about too much and just getting into a different headspace. I remember reading yeah. an interview with a guy who was a uh, like an electric rock violinist back at, probably about twenty years ago, and he said, "I don't write this shit. I just got an antenna and I receive, I receive it." Um, I like you know, it. and and it, that kind of reminds me of what you were talking about. Yeah, it's about. I guess you know, I, I uh, you know, we're we're a bit of a portal, you know, uh, of uh, you know, just come c- comes out. I like that though. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it really is the way it is. I mean, I've often said back before I had the ability to record, I've written more shit and forgotten it, you know, just because you know I'll write. I was writing so much stuff at, all the way since I'm 16 years old. So I wish that I had the recording capabilities that I have now. All those years, I would have. I don't even know how much music. I, right now, I have so much music written. I don't even know what to do with it all. So I. I've given songs to a couple of uh, vocalists, you know, that weren't musicians themselves. Uh, uh, a friend named Jacob Sin, who um, who was, you know, really down and depressed. It was really tough for a lot of people during COVID. You know, everybody deals with depression differently and, and that kind of masked, you know, depression. Everybody felt a little bit of depression, you know what I mean? Like, whereas, um, you know, so when you're, when you're a musician and you're in a band, if you're just a vocalist and you're not a musician, you all of a sudden you find two years of time where you have no way to make music. And so I, you know, I reached out to him and said, Hey man, I've got a bunch of songs that are done. You know, you can just lay, write something to it and, and, you know, and then put it out. So he did, he did a couple of songs and that was a fun thing for me as well, because uh, I didn't have to worry about what the vocal would be. I could just write this music and send it off. And so I have, you know, just dozens and dozens of songs and uh, it feels good. man. you know, I feel like uh, no matter what happens to me, you know, if my son grows up to become a guitar player, he'll have a lot of material to fuck with. <laughs> yeah, that's gold, man. Well, you mentioned Jeff Loomis and Steve from um, uh, Testament and stuff as well. When you were writing, at what point in the writing process did you go, fuck, this needs a Jeff Loomis solo or this needs Steve's bass line? Um, I, I was just writing, you know, writing songs. And then I have a really, you know, I have a friendship with all those guys. And, um, you know, so during that period of time of writing, I may get a text from Loomis and then I would just, I would, you know, I think it just came about that way again, very naturally like, Hey man, I'm writing this music, man. Can you do a solo on this t- song? And he was like, fuck yeah. And then two days later he sends me the solo. And, and, uh, that's another thing, you know, creating a record without ever being in the room with the people, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a really, that's the first time I've ever done that. You know, um, typically you go in the studio and you, you do it all together, you know, so having it all done that way uh, was really interesting. But because we couldn't see each other anyway, it was perfect. You know, it worked out great. Um, the Georgia I've known for years and years. Um, again, you know, I, when, when the album was done, I was like, man, I just want you to play on a song. And I just let him choose what song he wanted to play on. <laughs> and he chose Outside the Spiral. I mean, what am I going to tell him? You know, I mean, I... I just, I'm so grateful to have all those guys in there. And John Longstreth, I met on 70,000 tons of metal, um, in 2019. And, uh, we did like a, uh, a fan, uh, thing where we took the fans around in these dune buggies and drove around the, the, uh, Mexican islands. So anyway, we became friends and, and stayed in touch. And, uh, I, I had this song insistent demand that I just felt like, man, I would love to, have John Longstreet sort of outside of his comfort zone. What's a guy like that who's just, who's as badass and as fast and is just, you know, just a monster player, top of the game of, you know, extreme metal drummers. What does he do with a song like that? You know what I mean? And when you, when you hear the song in the album, I think, you know, people will see what I mean. It's a really weird song. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a funny story is, you know, I have so much respect for John Longstreth and people will, will get a kick out of this because I, I guess it was bold of me. He, I initially sent him the demo that I did with, with drums on it. And then I, uh, and then he sent me a version back that 
that let me know that he didn't even he didn't listen to the demo at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey man, uh, 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 so I had to I had to call the great John Longstreth back and be like, man, I'm sorry, could you do it again? Like you know, I mean, uh, just the, the nerve of me, you know, I mean grateful that he even played on the record so i love you john i'm i'm I, uh, i'm grateful to have you on the record but i just thought that was a funny story that some people will, will get a kick out of because i mean there's probably a long long list of people that wish that he would play on their record and so how dare me call him and ask him to do it again <laughs> but the version that he finally did after he listened to my he did he did his own version he wrote his own drums and it's different but he understood the the dynamics that were happening in the song uh a little bit more and uh it killed it man man and it's one of my favorite tracks on the album it's a weird one though <laughs> the weird ones are always the best man they go yeah. what, what was the old hunter s thompson saying uh, go weird or go pro <laughs> hunter uh, yeah uh, one, yeah what an amazing brain yeah and there's a guy that, there's a guy that used there's a guy that used a lot of um outside influence <laughs> yes a lot of oh, yes. Space. <laughs> i don't think he but, used yeah. any inside influence at all <laughs> a lot of the time <laughs> hey uh, but before yeah. we, before we wrap man i mean you know, as a vocalist, like listening to this record, there's so many different vocal styles and you're doing so many different things with your voice on this record. What advice would you give to a vocalist who's about to go in the studio to record something? Uh, don't be anything like me. Um, you know, be the opposite of me if you want to preserve your voice. I mean, uh, you know, I I'll say that and then I'll also say that there is a charm to drinking and smoking and screaming for 30 years. You know, uh, it creates a unique instrument. Mm. Uh, and I think a lot of the, the great, um, you know, the the, the the older vocalist you know uh jeff Sarah, dave vincent um even john tardy you know what i mean uh i i think we all just uh you know I, there's no reason to change the way you know i mean it, it, i think it's part of it i think it's part of your character i think mean, uh if you drink if you talk a lot if you talk loud if you smoke uh you know and, and so i would I, I really can't honestly give anybody any advice because everything i've ever done is exactly the worst thing i should ever do I, uh, you know, I have a friend, Todd Latore, who sings for uh, Queensryche. And I imagine that, that, you know, I think about how hard it must be for him to keep his voice able to sing those kinds of songs, you know, like uh, it's so well, you know, I mean, he's been doing it for a while now since he uh, took over in Queensryche. And I just, I'm grateful I don't have to do that, you know. So for extreme metal guy, I mean, just listen, go in and, and um, you know, my advice would be just to try to go in by yourself. Don't go in with all your friends. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. to, to try to get some introspective, uh, because that was one of the funnest things about doing this record for me was not being concerned about it, what anybody else thought and not being concerned about uh, other people's, you know, hurting someone's feelings if I don't want to use their idea. That was a big deal to me. I've written songs with lots and lots of different people, but there's always this dynamic of, oh man, you know, uh, you know, someone will play something, you go, all right, you kind of settle. And I don't, I didn't want, I didn't have to do any of that with, my, with myself. You know, I mean, I could argue with myself about the riff listen to it go get high ride around the car and listen to it come back in and kind of argue with myself about it that i enjoyed that experience a lot so if you go in as a vocalist just go in with you and the guy that runs the controls and i think you'll get that you'll get some real magic out of yourself that you wouldn't typically get because you're not worried about what somebody thinks you look like or what somebody thinks you sound like or when you fuck up that somebody's going to think you suck you know all those things go through your head and they affect your performance so i would say you know leave leave the band at home they can hear it when you're done you know what I mean? And if somebody has that much um, um, need to, 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 unless you really trust that person to be in there to produce your vocals, because it is nice to have somebody, but usually if the engineer is, is, is somebody you trust, or at least bring in one other person maybe to to make sure that you're, you're getting the, you know, you're not getting a yes man from from the engineer that just wants to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so I guess it, it depends on the situation. I've rambled on. That was way too long of an answer for, for such an easy question. Man. <laughs> I guess just do whatever you need to do, man. You know, I, I don't know. You know. Everybody has a different path, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally, man. Totally. Uh, Kelly, thank you very much for your time, brother. Fantastic. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Thanks. It's, I really enjoyed the conversation and uh, I uh, hope that everybody will check out the record on the 25th of August mm -hmm. and, and uh, looking forward to coming over there with Atheist really soon as well. No, so New great, Zealand Japan, and, and Australia. So uh, we've never, ever been there. And the band I have right now with Atheist is smoking. I mean, we're, there's, we just did a tour with Cynic that was incredible and uh, I, the band has never sounded better. So I can't wait to come see everybody over there. Thank you. Check out the record.
Yeah, there you go. Uh, Kelly Schaefer, Till the Dirt, Outside the Spiral. Check it out, man. It's going to be one of the records of the year. Do yourself a favor. Get it in your ears.